pulmonary artery catheter is a tool that, when used correctly, can give caregivers a wealth of hemodynamic information. This video will demonstrate appropriate setup and insertion of a pulmonary artery catheter. It does not serve to educate viewers on proper indications for use on or interpretation of the pulmonary artery catheter waveforms. The video should not be used as a substitute for institutional policies or differing instructions within the pulmonary artery catheter set. The first step in using a pulmonary artery catheter is to recognize its various components. The PA catheter is 110 centimeters in length, and although catheters come in various permutations, most have four separate lumens which serve individualized functions. Those lumens are demonstrated on the cross-sectional diagram in the lower right corner of this illustration. The proximal port opens approximately 30 centimeters from the tip of the catheter. This port is intended to rest in the right atrium and can be used to transduce the right atrial pressure and to administer medications or fluids into the right atrium. The distal port opens at the distal tip of the catheter. This port is used to measure pulmonary artery pressure or to measure a true mixed venous saturation. The third port is used to inflate the balloon. The balloon sits approximately two centimeters from the distal tip of the catheter. Each pulmonary artery catheter comes with a 1.5 milliliter syringe. When air from the syringe is injected, the balloon inflates. The inflated balloon helps guide the catheter from the right atrium into the pulmonary artery by following intracardiac blood flow. The balloon also serves to occlude or wedge the distal pulmonary artery, creating a static column of blood between the pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein. This allows for accurate measurement of the pulmonary artery occlusion pressure or wedge pressure. The final lumen in this pulmonary artery catheter is used for the thermistor. The thermistor is an external coil on the catheter approximately four centimeters from the distal tip. It's used to measure core blood temperature within the pulmonary artery and is a key tool in the measurement of cardiac output by thermodilution method. The first step in setting up the PA catheter is to ensure that transducers are placed at the level of the right atrium. In a supine patient, the right atrium is approximately 5 centimeters below the sternal angle. Prior to starting the procedure, it is important to include all members of the procedure team in a timeout. This includes verifying the correct patient, ensuring patient consent, reviewing necessary laboratory values and medications, and ensuring that the correct personnel and equipment are at the bedside and ready. During setup, it is important to ensure all necessary equipment is prepared for use and the proximal and distal lumens of the catheter are primed with saline. In addition, test the integrity of the balloon by using the 1.5 milliliter syringe to inject air into the balloon port. If the catheter will remain in the patient for an extended period of time, a sterile sheath will need to be placed over the catheter prior to inserting it in the patient. This sheath allows for manipulation of the catheter at a later time without compromising its sterility. At this point, it's safe to begin the procedure. First, utilize a high-frequency vascular ultrasound probe to identify both the correct vessel for catheter insertion and to ensure that no thrombus exists within the vessel. In this procedure, the right internal jugular vein is identified. Next, scrub the skin around the procedure site with chlorhexidine gluconate solution for a minimum of 30 seconds to ensure a sterile field. Once this is complete, the procedure site may be draped to ensure maintenance of a sterile working field. Using a vascular ultrasound probe, the internal jugular vein is again identified. Under real-time ultrasound guidance, a 25-gauge needle is inserted into the subcutaneous space and 1% lidocaine is injected, taking care to avoid vessels. Once the lidocaine injection is complete, the internal jugular vein is accessed under real-time ultrasound guidance using an 18-gauge needle. Once venous blood is obtained, the syringe is removed, leaving the needle in the vessel, and a spring wire is inserted through the needle into the internal jugular vein.
The needle is then removed, leaving only the spring wire in place. Following this, a 3 to 4 millimeter incision is made adjacent to the wire using a number 11 scalpel blade. Care must be taken not to cut the guide wire. An 8.5 French introducer sheath with dilator assembly is inserted over the wire and into the vein. As shown, it is imperative that the wire and dilator assembly are removed from the patient at this point, leaving the introducer sheath in place. Once the introducer sheath is in place, it is time to insert the pulmonary artery catheter. Prior to actual insertion, the sterile distal and proximal ports of the PA catheter must be connected to the non-sterile transducer tubing. All transducers should be zeroed by opening the side port of the three-way stopcock on the transducer and rotating the valve so the transducer is exposed to air. Zero the transducer on the monitor, close the side port, and turn the valve so the transducer is re-exposed to the catheter tubing. You're now ready to insert the pulmonary artery catheter. As shown, the pulmonary artery catheter is curved in a counterclockwise fashion at the distal end. This assists the catheter in making the necessary turn at the right ventricle to enter the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery catheter is inserted through the 8.5 French introducer sheath to a distance of 20 centimeters. This should place the distal tip of the pulmonary artery catheter into the right atrium. This can be confirmed on the monitor by noting a right atrial pressure waveform at the distal tip of the catheter. Once placement of the catheter into the right atrium has been confirmed, the balloon is inflated with air using the 1.5 milliliter syringe. The catheter is then advanced into the right ventricle and then into the pulmonary artery. Advancement is confirmed by noting appropriate waveforms and pressures in both the right ventricle and pulmonary artery. These should be recorded. When necessary, the PA catheter may also be advanced under direct fluoroscopic guidance. The catheter is advanced with the balloon up in the pulmonary artery until the pulmonary artery waveform diminishes and a wedged waveform is obtained. At this point, it is important to passively deflate the balloon on the end of the catheter to avoid complications. After obtaining accurate pulmonary artery pressures, a pulmonary artery occlusion pressure or wedge pressure may be obtained. Before inflating the catheter balloon, confirm a pulmonary artery catheter waveform on your monitor. Then, slowly inflate the balloon while observing the monitor. As the balloon inflates, the peaks and troughs of the PA waveform should transition to represent a tracing consistent with a wedged waveform. Catheters may migrate distally after initial placement. Therefore, take caution to inflate the balloon slowly and only inflate with enough air to obtain a satisfactorily wedged waveform. Overinflation of the balloon may cause pulmonary artery rupture. Once the balloon is inflated, a static column of blood will exist between the pulmonary artery distal to the catheter and similar sized postcapillary pulmonary veins. The static column of blood extends the catheter beyond the pulmonary artery circuit in order to obtain postcapillary pressure measurements. The final step in PA catheter placement includes thermodilution measurement of cardiac output. Assembly of the thermodilution interface includes room temperature or cooled solution for injection through the proximal port of the PA catheter in the appropriate syringe, stopcock, and tubing for injection of solution into the pulmonary artery. In addition, a temperature probe to measure the ambient temperature of the solution should be attached to the apparatus as shown, and the thermistor adapter should be hooked up to the monitor interface. Finally, Ensure that the appropriate conversion factor is entered into the computational monitoring software to ensure an accurate cardiac output reading. This number is generally found on the PA catheter packaging. Because thermodilution is dependent on injecting a known quantity of solution into the pulmonary artery, it is important to ensure that exactly 10 milliliters of solution is drawn into the syringe for injection. Next, Set the monitoring software to record the thermodilution cardiac output. Once the monitor indicates that injection of solution is okay, open the stopcock between the syringe and the proximal port of the PA catheter and inject with a rapid but steady rate. The monitor should indicate a graphical change in the temperature as it calculates the area under the curve. 
The larger the area under the curve, the lower the cardiac output. A minimum of three cardiac output measurements should be obtained and averaged. Once the catheter is ready for removal, ensure that the catheter balloon is fully deflated. Next, withdraw the catheter with a steady, gentle action. If resistance is felt, stop and assess the patient. Obtain a chest x-ray if necessary. Finally, once the catheter and introducer sheath have been removed, apply firm pressure to the insertion site until hemostasis is achieved. This concludes the tutorial on assembly and insertion of a pulmonary artery catheter. Thank you for watching.